faith or ignites a thousand other candles. Where do we see hope? For unto us a child is born, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. On this All second this the Sunday of Advent, Advent, let us light a candle to see hope. second candle is lit. Let us sing a verse of Christ be our light. Scripture is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. Amen. Kids, if there's any of you who want to come up front, you can kind of get up front and get ready. If I had Jason huh? turn out all the lights in here, would you be able to see? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because of those lights? Yeah. Yeah, what if yeah we, the candles. What if we blew out all the candles and we took out windows? And we 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 took out we pick out the Christmas light or the Christmas tree lights, we turn those off. The windows. You think the windows? Oh. <laughs> what if it was nighttime? <laughs> Street lights. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so it turns out you're exactly right. And you know what that proves us proves to us? It's really hard to find places that are dark, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why? Well, the TV when it's off, but you can still see it, right? Yeah. Like it's dark. The screen might be dark, but you can still see the screen. Yeah. Like there's still light somewhere. Yeah. 
Do you think that would do it? Yeah. But what if what if you have my phone in there? <laughs> well, do you know why I say that? Because the back of my phone glows in the dark. The back of my phone, it glows in the dark. Isn't that cool? Katrina has one too, so we could both put our phones in there. Do you know why I tell you about, and we're talking about this? Because sometimes we think that everything, we, we sometimes forget that we live in a really good world. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. And even when there's things that happen that are hard or scary or we're worried about something, have you guys ever been worried about stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So whenever these things happen, what we can be reminded is that the light, that it's, it's really actually we can't stop God. Because did you know that all of the light that we have represents God? No. All of the candles, the two candles on the altar, we have two of them because we have Jesus who's fully human and fully God. And so we light both candles to remember this about Jesus. We have our hope and our peace candle lit right now for church. The pink one is joy. That'll be next week. So it's Nope, the other purple one's love. It's the last week. <clears throat> well, it turns out that there's, it, it, okay, so I was wrong. It's hope and faith and joy and love. Oh. I know, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I had the names wrong last week. <laughs> but it yeah. turns out that it doesn't matter because it's faith, it's peace, it's joy, it's love, it's hope, it's all of them. No, that was perfect. I was the one who didn't remember. And that's why we have forgiveness. And so we have all of these ways that light shines because you can't take a dark room and open the door yeah. next to some place that has light and have the darkness overcome the room that has light, can you? No. And that's... Yeah, exactly. And so... What I want you to remember is no matter what things look like and how they seem, there's always somewhere that hope will come from and light will come from and, and God will be there. Can you remember that? That yeah. Jesus will, will help us and guide us even when we're worried and even just listening to our worries over and over again. God never gets tired. Isn't that neat? Well, except for we have the skylight and all the windows. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Yep. Do you know one week? One week we didn't actually have any, any, any electricity at church. And so what we did is we all sat on the in the pews, around the skylight, <clears throat> and we were able to worship. And we had a guitar and a xylophone, and a tin whistle, and band and the drums. And we sang. And we even managed to use battery power from phones and stuff to live stream it. Can you believe that? Yeah. So it turns out that light is really hard to stop. So can you remember that? Yeah. So let's pray, shall we? Thank you, God. And then you have stars in the sky. Thank you, God, that your light is really hard to stop and that your love is here, help us remember that no matter what happens, that the darkness doesn't win. It can't overcome the light, that you are always here with your peace and your hope and your faith and your joy and your love. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Well, I think Shay is here with, church, with Sunday school. And if she's not, I think Sarah is there with Sunday school. So... They're both there. I think all of our nursery workers are here today. It's very exciting. So you are all welcome to head in, and I am going to... Okay, we're, we're just done. Okay, so...
No, but forgiveness just happens when we make mistakes. It's an it's a wonderful oh, gift. God forgives us and God yep, God forgives everyone. Sorry, we lost our live stream on Facebook. And so I'm sending people on Facebook to trinityralston.org. And I'm headed there now. I apologize. I have a love-hate relationship with technology. I just want you all to know this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that forgiveness candle. Said it's the middle one. The middle one's the forgiveness candle. No, it's so. Okay, we need to restart the stream, Jason. For some reason it's not working. I don't know. Well, I went into the app. Maybe I was just in the wrong place. Okay, as long as you think you can see it there, did you just put watch live? Yes, well, when I went into our app, well, it was right there at the top, now it's not. Oh, that's oh my gosh. Sorry, people. Well, I'm recording this right now. Okay. Yeah, I have it stopped, so, okay, we'll get there. Okay. We have a love-hate relationship in this church with technology. So, the best way to be able to worship is to come in person. I just want you to know that. That does not ever end. We have a few things to share today as we gather. First of all, let's keep in our family or keep in our prayers the family of Don Johnson. Um, for those who do not know, Judy Johnson is Don's wife. Uh, she usually sits in the front row at eight eight thirty service, and then Lisa Bollinger and Steve Bollinger and Matthew and Sam are his. Um, that's his daughter and son in law, and two grandkids. So he also has two other sons. So let's keep them in our prayers. Services will be this week. There'll be visitation on Wednesday from 5 to 7 here at church. And then on Thursday at 1030, we will have a funeral service. So all are invited to attend. I want you to know that Don worked very hard to plan this service to the point that he asked Lisa at one point in time if she thought she was sending out too many invitations. Now, I, if you don't receive an invitation in the mail, it's because um, we don't send out invitations for funerals, but you're all still invited. <laughs> I love him. It is, and that's what he knew, and he wanted to make sure everybody knew it, so he wanted to make sure everyone would be here, so um, very important for him. Let's continue to pray for those who are dealing with cancer at this time. We have Reverend Bob Volkers, Terry Hodgen. Bob Wiley's brother Charles, Ethel, Ethel Higginson's extended family. Um, we add to that list Jill, who is a cousin to Terry Greggy, who um, her cancer is back. She um, was in remission and it, it came back in a different place. So let's keep her in our prayers. She'll be going into surgery on Wednesday. So if we could keep her in our prayers. Also, if we could keep in our prayers, Kathy Boardwell's daughter, Colleen, she will be going into surgery Thursday and then Wally has a neighbor, Karen, who will be going into surgery on Friday. So just lots of prayers for surgery for, and I said not just the surgery, but for the healing after, because if any of them are like me, they'll want to immediately do things, and they can't. So just lots of prayers there. Prayers as we continue our search for um, an office manager for the church, for Trinity UMC. We, sh we have sent out requests for interviews this week. So we are moving right along. Um, lots of prayers for the, the person that is bet, will be the best fit. Let's keep in our prayers all needing help this Christmas, a chair for our staff parish relations committee and for that team as they work on hiring someone. Um, do we have other prayers to lift up today? 
I have more, but we'll get into that. I just want to make sure we have anything else that needs shared. Yep, that's part of what I'm coming for. So yes, Cindy, Cindy's like, thanks for everyone who participated. So um, uh, yes, a great big thank you to everyone who made the Community Christmas Festival a success. The donation of cookies, time, and sharing made this a wonderful, wonderful day. It turns out we had a special Santa Claus <coughs> who came, and I don't want to make, I don't want to ruin anything, but Santa was here, and uh, he he um, was so excited to be here for us. He had the long gray beard and even got white um, dye for his beard. He was so excited because he wanted it whiter than gray. So bought a Santa suit. And what he did is as it was a lull, he'd go outside and wave to all the people driving by. Do you know how many parents had their kids beg them to stop? <laughs> so I just want you to know we had n numerous people from the neighborhood see Santa and come right in. And we had a block station and we had a card making station and ornaments. They could make ornaments, they could ma play with Play-Doh, they could make frost sugar cookies. There was a cocoa bar that offered the kids more sugar than they ever needed in their lives. We had soup made by Jared. Yes, that was so good. It's in the refrigerator if anyone wants some. There was two soups. There was a uh, kale soup that was requested by the TLC kids and staff because it's awesome and they love it. And then there was a Moroccan chickpea and lemon soup and then it turns out he realized that wasn't going to be enough, so he made the, what was it called, Matt? The oh no, we ran out of that soup soup. <laughs> <laughs> it was the oh no, we are going to run out of soup soup. Yes, it was chicken noodle, oh no, we ran out of soup soup. And it had all sorts of vegetables. Anything he could find to throw into the chicken noodle to make it good, he did. So thank you to Jared. And thank you to everyone who helped. I will tell you, um, we raised over $1,000. So for the first year, that's amazing. Um, it, there were arguments over how much we would, not arguments, there was lots of discussion, lively debates over how much to charge. And we made it free will. And it turns out when you do free will, you get more money. So people are very generous. Um, because some people pay more because they're going to pay for the people who can't pay them as much, and it all works out. So if you do want cookies, please help yourself. The boxes are there. You can fill them up. Um, and then there's a, 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 a bowl for donations if you have them to share. We will also be using the cookies to give to people who are homebound. Um, Kathy... Loveland, not Kathy, Connie Loveland has already asked if we can use some for the, the funeral on Thursday, so some will go for that. We will use them for gifts, all sorts of things. So if you, um, yeah, so thank you for all of your donations. It, it was a huge success. And this afternoon, um, if you call, I will not answer because I will be napping. So getting ready then for the week ahead. So we will have Bible study tonight, so please keep that in your prayers if you're taking part. It has that we'll be discussing chapters 2, 3, and 4. Um, I'm going to be excited if we get through 2 and 3, but we'll be ready for all of them. The choir cantata, let's keep that in our prayers. It's next Sunday, and that starts our 945 service. And so um, just so you know, the 945 service leadership team met and talked about it. We will have 945 service on the 17th, the 24th, the 31st, and those were already set because they're all holidays or the cantata, and then leadership team met, and we decided that due to the winter weather and the possibility of snow and ice, we would continue with a nine, one 945 service through January and February. We will keep you posted what happens in March, but that will make it so that way... Um, well, we get to see each other again because it makes it so we all, both services, get to see each other. It also makes it so that people who would normally come at 8.30 who would need to wait for snow to be cleared or ice to be removed, they can wait. 
And it also makes it easier for us to watch online because we have one time, one service, and if, you can't, if we can't make it, we can do that online. So just mark your calendars. Christmas Eve, we have two services. Um, after the morning service, we'll have our Christmas program at 9.45 that morning. Then our Christmas Eve service will be that evening. We will have a 5 p.m. service and a 7 p.m. service. We will not have the 11 p.m. service this year. It turns out last year's 11 p.m. service, I think we had seven people besides the pastor and the praise team. And we thought maybe they could come at a different time, especially since two of the seven were my parents. <laughs> and my mom said, we'll come whenever. And I said, okay. And then this old lady can go to bed. So story time is coming up December 21st, and we will have a special appearance of the Grinch. So it's very exciting. If you want to help promote it, we have yard signs to share. We also have our missions team that will be, that's still collecting for Project Harmony, and then we have Christmas cards and our free pantry. Thank you to the UMW. If you look in the cupboard, the, the food is full. Our UMW gave money to Cindy Jolly to go shopping, and she went shopping. So um, if you want to help put that across the street, please do. Cards are there to write to people who are at Papillion Manor or else who are um, homebound or we just want to celebrate them with cards this Christmas. If you would like to do those cards during worship, you are welcome to. Um, you can write them whenever you put them into the Christmas bags the, the, and that's where the finished cards go. Um, for, for this year's the Advent offering, we will be sending out a letter this week, but our, our Advent offering this year, we decided that one of our goals as a church is to not compete over finances and money, and so what we decided the leadership team talked about doing and agreed to is we will have two funds this year for our Advent offering that you're invited to give to, and you can always give to whatever, but we have put it to mission shares so that it'll go to pay for our mission shares, which we are at a hundred. We are on track to pay a hundred percent of, but this helps with just the budget as in general and makes it so we know we will make our mission shares. And then we decided to join the missions team and do an Advent offering for Project Harmony. And so, as money comes in, we will talk with missions and determine if we are just going to send money with our gifts to Project Harmony or if we're going to go shopping and then give everything to them. So please give generously. If you don't notate, we split it half and half. If you notate... Yes. Okay, so Cindy has said that maybe what we can do is the money we, donate, we gather from the Advent offering can go to purchase items for older kids because they're a little more expensive. And so that's a great idea. And we'll just be, we decided to start just being in partnership. So as things happen, we're gonna do a, try to do a better job of communication. Can you imagine? I tell you what, we have goals, we have visions, we have dreams, and it's gonna take God to make them work. <laughs> so, so other things to share for our praise time? I ask you to keep all of that in your prayers. We are still taking orders for poinsettias, and so if you would like one of those, please make sure to fill that out. Um, you can attach your money to it or bring it into the office this week. It says the deadline is the 13th. That's just so we make sure we have enough poinsettias. If you still, if you forget and say it's next Sunday, you can still fill out a form. Yes? Prayers for Kathy Greggy and her cataract surgery. It went well. Yep, she has another one coming up, so let's keep her in our prayers. And prayers for everyone who is traveling and getting ready to go different places and family who's coming in and all of the Christmas activities and the programs. I know a lot of them were this last week, so, but just lots of prayers. So, Okay, should we turn to God? I mean, I know this whole service has, but now it's a chance for just all of us to, um, to share our lives to share all that we have. So let's take a moment and offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you. 
Thank you for bringing us to this place now as we sit in the silence. Help us see you, hear you, believe in you, as we lift our lives to you, as we listen, as we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for those who are trying to worship with us online and are running into technical difficulties. Help us remember your grace, your love. And help us remember that as things go crazy or seem like all is lost, that you are here. You are here with your light, with your love. You are here dispelling the darkness. You who through the generations remind us that you have shown light upon your people who walked in darkness, who give us your word, your guidance, your spirit that's a lamp unto a feet and a light unto our path. You who sent your child, our Savior, into the world to be a light, to cast out shadows as he challenged us not to hide our light but to share with the world so all can see. God, help us as we come before you to be a light of hope that we can reflect your light of hope for others. God, we thank you. We thank you for the way we can serve you and share in your world, for the blessing of the, the gifts that we have been given as your church. Help us know how to share with your community, with the people around us, so they can know your light, your love, your presence is here. We thank you, God, that you remind us, you dispel the darkness, that you are the great God of hope who gives us a promise even in death. You will be with every person who is going in for surgery. You are with everyone who has been diagnosed with cancer You're with those who are in war-torn areas. You offer a promise. Help us, God, share your promise. Live out your love and know how to be your people. How to reach out to our neighbors, to our community, to friends, to family, and share how to stand up for justice. How to remind us all that all people, no matter race, gender, or however we present ourselves, live in your love, live in your forgiveness, live in your hope. God, that's what you remind us as we share the promise that you have overcome the darkness. As we live in your hope, Guide us now. Guide us to be inspired, to be encouraged, to be lifted up as as we might come this week tired, or as Matt said, with so much on our to-do list, 
of gifts to buy and activities to go to and things to do remind us of your presence and your peace. Remind us of this, especially as we remember we don't come alone. We come as your people who hear your good news and who we pray will be inspired to live it out as your son, our savior, inspired us. And now, Lord, by your spirit, guide us as we pray together, lifting our hearts, minds, and voices, sharing your prayer. (coughs) Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. see what you're doing good okay our second scripture today comes from the book of john chapter one and it's verses one through five i just want you all to know how good jason is at making it so that we have online because he's already on top of getting everything set up for the people online to see so thank you jason john chapter one verses one through five is our scripture for today the second one the story of the word Let us hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the the beginning. Everything came into being throughout the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Let us pray, shall we? Gracious God, may you be in the words of my mouth that they be pleasing to you and guide us, Lord, to hear your message, to be inspired, to be encouraged for your glory and love. We pray this by the power of your spirit that will transform all things so that we can be filled with your hope. Amen. Amen. I thought we were going to sing another song. I'm tired enough. I would have went with you, Caleb. (laughs) Got to tell y'all. So for the season of Advent, there's always a theme. Did you all know this? It's a lot of fun. We always have a plan. It doesn't always get executed exactly as we want to, but we always have a plan. And this year's plan was, has been, and is, and will continue to be, talking about hope. Anybody like talking about hope? Turns out that Jesus was full of lots of information about hope, and having hope was something that he did in his life. It was a spiritual discipline. And so 
we are focusing on having hope as Jesus did. And one of the things that Jesus allowed us to do and inspires us to do and encouraged us to do was to remember that we can see hope. You know? In fact, one of the best ways to see hope has been explained by Reverend Gerhard E. Frost. He was a pastor who wrote poetry. This was not a surprise to me. And he was asked about hope. He, they, he was just asked, what do you see as hope? And, and he had this answer, and it was a poem. I don't know what book it's from. I looked. I could not find it. But I do know that this is what he shared. If I am asked what my grounds for hope, what are my grounds for hope, this is my answer. Light is Lord over darkness. Truth is Lord over falseness, falsehood. Life is Lord over death. Of all the facts I daily live with, there's none more comforting than this. I'm going to move out of the way of the picture. If I have two rooms, one dark and the other light, and I open the door between them, the dark room becomes lighter without the light one becoming darker. I know this is no headline, but it's a marvelous footnote, and God comforts me in that. Isn't that neat? If I have two rooms, one's dark, one's light, and I open the door, the, light, the dark one gets lighter, and the light one does not get darker. You know, that's a great analogy for God's love, isn't it? The light never ends, never stops, never, always is enough. Always is enough. In thinking about our scriptures for today, we have one from Isaiah and one from John, and both of them are reminders of the way humans have been throughout the generations. You know? As humans, let's be honest, we worry, or at least I know I do, and I've talked to many people who worry about how it is that we do this, because the reality is, is there's a lot of stuff in the world that's really hard to, to wrap our heads around, isn't there? So <clears throat> it turns out at one point in time, I needed a there was a story from the New York Times that I wanted to have for preaching for a sermon I was writing, and it, it worked perfectly in the sermon. And, and as happens to us all, um, I had to sign up, right? Give them my email address. Anybody else done this? And then you never quit getting emails? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and so I got all the free ones, and everything worked. I think I even paid for it for a little while. And then I was like, I'm done. I canceled, and I keep getting emails, and I got to tell you, sometimes I have to mass delete those emails because they're overwhelming at times, aren't they? You know, I, I could pull out my phone and share them. I know like this last week, it's like the humanitarian aid to Gaza is not happening as, and there are people who are starving and we have information about Russia and Ukraine happening. And these are just headlines, I could tell you from headlines how it looks like the labor market's doing, what's happening in politics, who's doing what, when, where, why, and how, and none of it looks like fun. You know, we just get overwhelmed, don't we? And sometimes when I'm reading those things, I kind of feel like I'm in this really dark room. And then as a pastor, I have to tell you, everybody... Everybody loves to tell pastors things because it relieves stress, right? I, I never, it was so funny. I was talking to a colleague of mine. Um, his name is Reverend Ron Rimmick. And I saw him at annual conference. And I used to be his intern. And he and I became good friends because I offered to be his intern for free. That's when he said yes. Um, which all pastors do. And I was talking to him at annual conference. We hadn't seen each other in forever. We were catching up, and this woman came up to him and started telling him about all the surgeries she'd had to the point she almost showed him things that I'm like, 
whoa, I'm like standing right here. Are you sure you want me to know all this or him? Sometimes it feels like we're in the dark. And it's overwhelming and it's exhausting and it's hard. And then we remember that God opens a door and the light floods in and we can see. And it just takes a tiny little thing, doesn't it? You ever been down in a cave and had them turn on a match? Light a match. You can't see a lot, but you can see, or you can't see like you would in this room, but you can see a lot. One little match makes it so you can see the people standing right there. Because the promise of God through the generations that we heard today from Roy sharing and from the book of John and from all of it is that the light does not, is not overcome by the darkness. This is what was shared to the people by Isaiah when they were being exiled into foreign lands. This is what was being shared as Jesus came into the world and, and revealed God's love and showed people who, you think we have it bad. They, they were people who, who were, were in the Roman Empire who had no rights, who had no money, who often didn't even know where their meal was where they would get food for the day. And yet what was being shared was the light has come, there's hope, there's promise, God is here. And you know what? That promise that God is here hasn't stopped. It was shared yesterday by this church. Do you know how many cookies we got? It was bad enough, I mean, it was, it was good enough, I should say good enough, that literally my job yesterday when all was said and done at the end of the day was to walk through the cookies and to make it so that all the cookies that were in a different area all got put together because there were so many we couldn't even keep track of them all. I just happened to have seen them enough and been around them enough, I had remembered where they all lived. I mean, that was literally the job. And it was to, to walk around and, and visit and, and to have it be that as, oh, we had one, one family who lives over in the apartments were driving along and saw Santa outside, and the kids... I don't know, probably begged, Mom, Mom, it's Santa, it's Santa. And she came in. We put a little sign out. We did get one sign out. I was excited, as well as the banner. And she came in with her kids, and, and they were off playing with the Play-Doh. And one of them was probably about a year and a half, and he had climbed up on the table because he wanted a Play-Doh toy that he was, was going to use with his Play-Doh. And I saw him on the table. And I'm like, okay, I'm not his mom. I can't tell him to get down. I can't, I'm not going to touch him because I'll scare him. He has no idea who he is. So I just went over and I knelt down. And the, his sister is sitting there looking at me like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Tessa. I'm not doing anything. I'm just here in case he falls. I can catch him. <laughs> so I am knelt down there and kind of take the chair and scooch it over. So if he happens to step back, he didn't realize, I think, that he'd moved on the table and I didn't want him to just fall in open air. So I put the table, the chair where his foot would hit it. And pretty soon here comes mom over and she's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I got him. It's okay. I just, just didn't want him to fall. Nobody was yelled at. Nobody, everything, every, well, actually, I take that back. I didn't yell at anyone. Mom might have said, you need to get down, which luckily I'd moved the chair. <laughs> I don't know who they were. That's what we're here for, because you see, we have a lot of light. We have a lot of love. We have a lot to share. We have a lot to give. You know, when push came to shove at the end of the day, I just went, it's a free will donation I told Cindy, I said, it's whatever they want to give. I said, if they give 20, they give 20. If they give 15, they give 15. She goes, what if they give five? I said, they give five. 
And that's okay. Because some people gave 100. <laughs> you know? And that's how we do it. That is the church. And that's how we function. That's how we make it work. And that's, we love on the goodness of each other and the reminder that when we open a door, we bring light. We bring love. We bring hope and peace. So I hope as we keep trying new things, as I, I messaged um, Christy yesterday, uh, who's often up here, she does story time. She messaged afterwards and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm great. I thrive on these things. It's awesome. Now I'm just resting. And she's like, until the next one. And I'm like, until the next one. Because there will be. Come the new year, we'll be working with Cribs Kids. We'll have the friendship group starting where we'll have kids, kids and adults with disabilities come in and have activities for them. We'll have the Valentine's Day dinner coming up in February. We will... We will figure out ways to share and to promote and to live out the community center and let people know we are here as a beacon of light. Because here's the thing. From generation to generation, we have this promise that God is here giving light in the darkness and the way it happens is for the people who believe and who trust in God, share it. And that's us. And all other people in churches, and we gather, and we share, and we inspire. And we let the world know we're going to open the door. We're going to let the light of Christ out into the world. And we're going to let you know God's beacon of love is here. Because that's what we're called to be about. So never forget... When you're standing in that room of darkness, look, there's light. There's love. There's hope. There's God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having been a beacon of light through the, the generations, for sharing with people to not have to be overcome by the worries and the fears and the doubts and the questions, but to know that through your light and your love, and your compassion, the darkness has been overcome. Even when we don't know how, God, the darkness has been overcome. Remind us of the two rooms to remember that the darkness doesn't, doesn't do anything to the light. You don't have to shut a door and put tape around it in a light room to keep the dark out. You have to do that in the dark room to keep the light out because that's how powerful, how amazing you are. Help us remember this, Lord, as we strive to share your love and your promise with the world. Thank you. Thank you for the, the inspiration, the gifts you've shared with us this past week, this past month as we prepared for yesterday. Help us continue to prepare to share throughout the rest of this season and beyond. So your glory can be known so God's people can know so all people can know your light is here and believe amen amen we now have a moment to share our offering our gifts as I said gifts in the church are often given um, free will donations and that is what we ask for your gifts make it so that we can offer God's light in many different ways, so I hope you give generously as the praise team gives their gifts and sings for us. Glory. glory. glory let there be peace. Oh yes, glory, let there be peace. Do you need my microphone? It's saying I'm on, but I'm not connecting. Here you go. Okay. Not your. I'm doubled up. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going to hear me. <laughs> I was coming back. <laughs> i
star burns in the darkness, shines with the promise, Emmanuel. One child born in the stillness, living within us, Emmanuel. We're singing glory, glory, let there be peace, let there be in all of us, that we feel the peace and the joy of this season. And as I say that, I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing out with joy, He came down. the offering now. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, in, in Psalm 139, you remind us how nighttime would shine bright as day, because darkness is the same as light to you. Thank you for your light and how it shines on the gifts we give to you. Let them remind people of the light you give. Light that has shined since the beginning of time still shines today and will shine for eternity. Light that gives us hope. Amen. Amen. On the front of your bulletins, you get to take just a little tiny bit of wisdom with you if you choose. It's from Desmond Tutu, and it says, Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. As we go from this place today, may we go with the blessings of God that may find us and remind us there is light in the darkness, strength in your weakness, grace when we stumble, joy when we least expect it, and peace in the midst of chaos, and hope in the promises of God. Lord, thank you. Thank you for shining your light for us from generation to generation. Help us continue to see it and to share it. So the generations to come will know too. Lord, we go with you now with your spirit of peace that gives us an understanding that is unspeakable. With your son, our savior, who reminds us of your love. With you. Thank you, God, that we never go alone. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
We're going to be closing our service with Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. It's number 213 in the hymnal if you want to follow along that way. The lyrics are on the screen. We're doing the second and third verse just to be different. <laughs> 